Okay, so welcome to the second set of uh, lectures on um, structural reliability. So in the previous uh, set of lectures, we reviewed and developed the, th the theory that we use to describe the distributions of random variables. In this lecture, the focus is going to be uh, specifically around sampling and using sampling to, to, to estimate the parameters that we use to characterize random variables. Okay, so the first concept that we need to consider is that of a point estimator. So you'll remember from the previous set of lectures, for a given random variable, one would have a population which represents all the possible realizations that that random variable can take. Now, what we would generally want to do is to use parameters to describe and summarize the behavior of the random variable over the scope of its population. But of course, very often we do not know what those parameters are. Um, um, so the idea is to take a sample which represents the population and then determine the parameters for the sample uh, which we then use to estimate what the parameters of the population would be. Uh, those parameters are then referred to as point estimators. So in terms of notation we will represent population parameters uh, using Greek letters, so let's say for example using theta, and then to represent the estimator of that population, we will put a little hat on it, right? So we will say theta hat. And the next step would be to determine some parameter for the sample, so let's say Q, and then use that value to estimate uh, the value of the population parameter by setting it equal to the point estimator. So theta here is, is a generic parameter. In general, for our purposes, we will be interested in the mean and the standard deviation of the population. Okay, so let's suppose we have taken a single sample that consists of n specimens. Um, that is to say we have a sample of n values, x1, x2, etc. up to xn, and these are intended as a whole to represent the, the corresponding population of the random variable. Okay, so, so let's suppose that we are fairly naive and we want to come up with uh, an estimator for the population mean and an estimator for the population variance. Uh, which is to say we want some measure of uh, where the middle of the range is that these values cover and sort of how broad the range is that it covers. So, so one way one could estimate where the middle is is by just taking the largest and the smallest values in this set of n values and uh, finding the point in between them. Right, so let's suppose we have our values on a line, we have our biggest value and we have our smallest value, we add them up together and we get the center. Similarly, to get an estimate of the standard deviation, uh, one can take the biggest value and the smallest value, subtract them from one another and divide by six, and that should give one a fairly good estimate of what the um, standard deviation is. Now, those these two estimates of the uh, mean and the standard deviation will give you a good idea of what these values are. They will not be very accurate, and they have a couple of problems. The first is that they are very susceptible to outliers. So if either the maximum or the minimum is... Uh, an unusually large value or an unusually small value, then you're going to get bad estimator values for your population mean and your population standard deviation. The other thing is that you've now put a lot of effort into collecting n values, uh, whatever n might be, it might be 10, it might be 1000, um, and you're only using two of them, you're only using the biggest and the smallest one. So everything in between is completely ignored. Uh, so if you collected more values, you will only have a change in either of these two values if one of, the, one of your new values happened to be bigger or smaller than your biggest and your smallest value up to that point. So the problems I just highlighted there can be uh, formalized in terms of the bias of an estimator and the extent to which it's consistent. So bias is fairly uh, self-explanatory in the sense that the estimator should not systematically over or underestimate the population parameter. Um, and consistency refers to the fact that as you increase the size of the sample, your uh, estimator should tend towards the actual value of the population, which does not happen very efficiently in either of these cases. Now you can show that the form of the mean that we're all familiar with is a estimator for the mean that that satisfies these two conditions. Uh, similarly, you can show that this form for the standard deviation is a consistent and unbiased estimator for the population mean. 
Now, let me highlight here that this is the sample standard deviation and that this value of n minus 1 in the denominator here is important to ensure that it is unbiased. Now, what, we, what should also be clear here is that we are determining a value for the mean and the standard deviation that is uncertain, right? If we were to collect a different sample of n points, the value of the mean of that sample and its standard deviation will be different. So that implies that both of these entities are in themselves random variables. Now, now focusing specifically on the mean, we can refer to it as a random variable, like that, which when we take a sample will have some specific value, in which case we'll um, use the lowercase to refer to it. And that also means that that random variable has an expected value and a variance. These are all concepts that we are going to explore further now. Let's suppose that we have some random variable which is normally distributed with a mean and a variance as given over there. And then we take an independent, identically distributed random sample uh, of size n of values of this random variable. And then we determine the mean of that sample. So we will use x bar to refer to that mean. To calculate that mean, what we what we do is we use our equation that we're familiar with, and and, and what I'm going, now going to do is to show that the expected value of our sample mean is also equal to the mean of the random variable, and the variance of the sample mean is equal to the variance of the random variable divided by the sample size. So let's look at the expected value first. Um, taking the expected value of the sample mean, which is to say taking the expected value of that function, we can take the sample size, which is constant, out of the operator, and then we just end up with a sum of expected values. And because each of these are random outcomes of the same random variable, they will each have the same expectation value. So there are n of them here, so this is equal to 1 over n times n mu, and the n's cancel, and you end up with that. Playing a similar game with the variance, now we take the variance of this function. Now recording the, the definition of the, the variance operator in terms of the integral of the mean square difference, uh, the implication of that is if you have a constant in the function, you can take it out of the operator, but uh, then you have to square it. You can determine the variance of a sum by taking the, uh, the sum of the variances of the individual terms, which in this case, again, because each of these are um, instances of our identically distributed random variable, each of them has the same variance, which is sigma squared. And there are, again, n of them in here. So this is equal to 1 over n squared times n sigma squared. That n cancels with one of those, and you end up with this. OK, so a further result, which you can verify by looking at the univariate normal distribution function, um, is that if you take the sum of normally distributed um, random variables, that sum in itself is also normally distributed, which immediately implies that the sample mean of a normally distributed random variable is in itself also normally distributed. Um, and the distribution parameters of that normal distribution are the population mean and uh, population variance divided by the sample size. Now this is to say that if you have a random variable which is normally distributed, its sample mean will be exactly normally distributed. However, an interesting further result is that if you have a random variable that is not normally distributed, its sample mean will be approximately normally distributed. So in statistical notation, where we would usually have said something has a, is distributed according to some uh, distribution, we now say it is approximately distributed according to some distribution. This statement that for a random variable with any distribution, whether it's normal or not, its sample mean will be approximately normally distributed is what is generally referred to as the central limit theorem. Okay, so the first thing that we can do with this information is to come up with a confidence interval for the sample mean. So let's again say that we have a random sample of n values uh, drawn from a population for which the random variable has 
um, expected value mu and variance sigma squared. And the sample mean has expected value mu and variance sigma squared over n. We can now uh, play the same game that we played in the previous set of lectures where we standardize that random variable. Firstly by subtracting its expected value and then by dividing by its standard deviation. This then gives us a transformed random variable which is normally distributed with a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. Now keep, now keep in mind that in general we will not know what the population mean is and we will often also not know, not know what the population variance is. And the whole point of taking a sample is to estimate these parameters. Now very often you can actually draw on previous experience to, to make a, a broader estimate of what the population variance is, in which case the only unknown that you are trying to estimate here is just the population mean in itself. Um, now, rather than just coming up with a single value for it, it would be far more useful to have a, a range of values that represent some level of confidence to give you an idea of how well you actually know this value that you've just tried to estimate. So to do that, what we're going to do is to use this uh, transformation to construct a interval for our population mean, which is to say that given the value for our sample mean and the coefficient of variation which in this case is this. We can estimate a lower or an upper bound on the population mean corresponding to some level of confidence alpha. And as I showed in the previous set of lectures, in, in the case of the normal distribution, this uh, multiplier is simply the standard normal variable that corresponds to a particular probability value. And, and in that way, we can then find a bound on the, on the mean. Now it's important to keep in mind that for me, me to be able to use the normal distribution here, I assume that the population variance is known. So I assume that I know sigma. In cases where you don't know what the population variance is, you have to estimate it as well using your sample standard deviation. And in that case, the convergence of the distribution of the sample mean towards a normal distribution will be slower and, and may not be accurate enough if you have a fairly small sample size. So what you do instead is to, to represent it using the student's t-distribution, which takes into account the fact that you may have a smaller sample size. The, so the t-distribution de uh, depends on a number of degrees of freedom, which uh, is effectively your sample size. And you can see that as the sample size increases to values above 30, the t-distribution tends asymptotically towards the normal distribution. So if you have small samples and you have to estimate this, the, the, the variance using the sample variance, you need to use the t-distribution to get your interval multiplier. Okay, so another sample-related interval that we are going to need is a confidence interval on the proportion of a sample. So, so you remember right at the start of the previous set of lectures, we, we determined the proportion of a certain number of balls that were red. Now I'm not going to get into this here, but you can show that when you have a proportion like that and it has a mean value p, then its variance has this form. Then the, and then from the central limit theorem, it follows that this estimator of p is normally distributed with that um, expected value and variance. Now the problem is that we don't know what p is. We want to actually determine it. So if we want to come up with a interval for it, we need to estimate what the variance is. And we estimate it using our estimator. So uh, we just put p hat in there. Once we've done that, we, we can then use the fact that it's normally distributed to construct an interval uh, which has this form over here. 